this week's episode of the award-winning, multiple award-winning Here For It podcast is brought to you by Good Mornings. Good morning to you, listener. Good morning to Beyonce. Good morning to Barack. Good morning to Patty. Not to you, Donald Trump. You can choke. (laughs) And I mean that. The emotional turmoil that this one white man has done might be unmatched by any other white man in history. Hitler killed six million people, and it looks like Trump is saying, hold my beer. Girl, I'm going for the record. I'm going for the goal. Chill. So, and he was did an interview with um the Woodward person with the book new, new book out. He said, you know, it seems like the worse the person is, the better I connect to him. <sighs> you didn't have to say that out loud, but you know. We what? already know. <laughs> Your track record do show that. We already know. Um, mm, so, girl, good morning to everybody except him. He yeah. can He can choke. I didn't say he had to die, but he can choke. 194,000 Americans are dead on his watch. 196. Yeah. As, as he can, he can die. Recording. He can die as well. He can die as well. As per the recording of this episode, I am the Superman, T H E E S U P A M A N, aka the HR manager of Bitchcraft and Wigatry, uh, BKA the Gay Oracle. My name is Ronald Matters. Follow me on the internet. Ten years, you guys, going strong. Oh, Ronald, <laughs> Ronald Matters. And follow me on the internet at ronaldmatters.com. Our icebreaker this week is, can you tell us about a time you were catfished? <laughs> I think I've told this story before. I'm sure I have, but here it goes again. So I'm in the dorm. It's freshman year. I'm on the um the educated upper class freshman. You know the smart the smart freshmen. We had high GPAs coming in from high school. They put y'all in different rooms. They put us on a different floor because we had a different program. Like we had like different meetings every week, and we had like a specific class we had to take because we was a part of the freshman first program at the University of Memphis. So I was smart. They was trying to protect the nerds from everybody else. Yes. So, um, okay, all right, it's like 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. I'm on A for A. This is how old it was, y'all. Nothing else was out yet. You still have to do the map quest for the directions. So, um, I'm on A for A, and it's like, I'm like, oh, I need some late night fever. I've been talking to this dude for like two or three days on A for A. I'm like, hmm. Well, my roommate over his girlfriend um, room, he done dressed up as a girl, and he going to sleep on her side of the dorm. He going to stay over there for the night so I can get me some fever. And so you you have to put your hoodie, you have to put like on a, a Victoria's Secret pink hoodie, and you have to put on the matching oh, pink your roommate was a pants. No, my roommate was a boy. You have to get your girlfriend's clothes or ask to borrow her big homegirl clothes. And so you just walk past the residential desk. To you want me to answer your think? real question or you want me to tell you the scam? <laughs> <laughs> to make them think that you are a girl. <laughs> to get into the girl. The I've never I've never lived a dorm life. I don't know that. Okay. When I went to college, I stayed in an apartment. Rich. So, um, anyway, so I had been talking to this dude on A for A for like two or three days, but he had never unlocked his picture. We had talked on the phone between classes. He would text me good morning all three days or whatever. Also, I'm new to the gay world. I did not date in high school or nothing because, like, my grandparents didn't allow me to do no shit like that. So this is when I learned you don't meet a person without getting pictures first. But this was 2005. Freshman in college. Thought I was smart. Dumb. <laughs> so he comes over my to my dorm room and he I open the door and it's a 6 foot 4, 350 pound man standing in front of me. And I am all of meat. <laughs> 6 feet 175 pounds. I'm two something now but ooh, this was before the freshman 15 and then at 30 and then you know COVID, gang weight, I can't blame that. So I was like 175 back then. So I opened the door. I was like, okay, well, six foot four, 365 pounds. 
Here we are. Like, oh, yeah, come in. Hey, how you doing? It's like, your fetish. Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> it's like 9 to 10 o'clock at night. And I'm just like, oh, okay. Well, you can sit on the end of my twin bed. Big and bleed. <laughs> <laughs> now it's a seesaw. <laughs> <laughs> gonna fly the fuck out of there. And so I don't even know if there was really a catfish because it was my fault for not asking for pictures first, but it was also not what I was expecting. Like when I was on the phone, I was like, oh my gosh, his voice is so deep and so low. He sounds so masculine. And then he got a good job. And he drive a good car. He's he's the way I'm picturing him. Is the way he's going to look when he shows up to my door. He's going to look like um, Boris Kojo or something when he gets to my door. Oh, okay. All right. Here we are. I guess the catfish was on me as well. Still dumb. <laughs> me, because it was me catfishing myself in my own mind. My bad. <laughs> oh, your mind is bad. But then it ended up being beautiful. I ended up falling for him and being with him and staying with him in his house and met his mama. I mean, multiple times, and just it ended up being beautiful. It ended up being beautiful, but I was just like, "Wow!" It was just—I guess I catfished myself. That was the first time I was catfished. Ooh. Mm. Um, for me, <laughs> uh, I flew to another city, and that city is DC, uh, where I currently reside in the vicinity of, not directly in DC anymore, and um the young man had concealed that he had gained 40 pounds since we started talking. Not five, not 10, not 20, not 30. 40 pounds since we had started talking. And um, I had even seen, I had seen the pictures, but, but the pictures was old as fuck. <laughs> it was not of what he currently uh, was experiencing in life. And uh, I got to the airport and when I met him at the airport, I was like, oh no. There's nothing wrong with big boys, but this is I did not sign up for a big boy trip this time. Um, so I thought that it was I had a good time in D.C. because I ended up like separating from him while I was in D.C. He thought, you know, I was going to stay with him and, um, you know, love him through his catfishing. You know, he could just lie to you and then you just love him and forgive him through it. Sir, this is our first time eating. <laughs> It is, and 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 before COVID, when we when we were still going out to the clubs and bars and everything, he still like shades me and tells his friends that I'm a bad person. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, is that you... why he don't like me? Yes, because you're associated. Yeah, I was gonna say because he he gives me the, and I just be like, well, I'm Ronald Matters, and you're you. <laughs> I can't do nothing about that, sir. <laughs> yeah, and that was like eight years ago. He ain't done nothing about it since then either. So, well, it just so our listeners, so it's nothing against big boys. Just don't lie, hide, conceal, whatever, all that playing and games and bush. Reindeer games. <laughs> Be honest. Yeah. Yes. I'm a big boy. Okay. Because there's plenty of people that like the extra cushion for the pushing. Me. See? <laughs> Now, y'all wouldn't have been compatible, but I'm just saying. No, we sisters. Um, well, fourth cousins or something. Mm. Genealogy. Genealogy, whatever the word is. Mm. Big words. Support for this ghetto-ass podcast. <laughs> this ghetto gay-ass. This ghetto gay black-ass podcast comes from a couple great donors and from subscribers like you guys. Uh, if you would like to continue this gay podcast, please get over to our Patreon. We are doing a giveaway at the end of the month, so you cannot get anything that we're giving away unless you are a patron. So please get over to our Patreon. Our Patreon link will be in the description below. We give extra content often over there, and you can get videos, uh, other episodes, pictures, updates, all kinds of things over on our Patreon. Last week, um, we asked uh, the Hereford Hive to recommend some documentaries that they are looking at and watch and or, you know, get on a to-do list. And Alejandro said, Dirty Money is a good documentary on Netflix. And I definitely, uh, I think that's the um, series that had the Wells Fargo episodes where they were scamming people out of the home loans and the auto loans. Oh. Something about Wells Fargo is trying to get you signed up for 
so many products. It's not just about having a checking account with them. They want to um, scam your whole life. <laughs> so Wells definitely... Fargo has so many scams. <laughs> I am so glad to not be a customer of Wells Fargo anymore. Wells Fargo has so many fucking scams. Okay. I had, I, not to tell my personal business, <laughs> but I had a whole lot of money in a Wells Fargo account. And then they were telling me, mm, you can only spend this much of it. Bitch, it's mine. Shut up. So I do like to... Aretha put some under the couch. <laughs> oh, I put it all in my purse and took it home. <laughs> I wasn't playing them games. I put it in another bank account. We're not playing that. We're and playing... T- and Tay commented, I actually love Never Sleep Again, the Elm Street Legacy. So it's called Never Sleep Again, the Elm Street Legacy. About Nightmare it's a on Elm Street? documentary about the Nightmare on Elm Street. All eight of them. Also, random as hell, the Go-Go's just released a documentary on Showtime of their career. I like it because their drummer has the mouth of a sailor, and I didn't realize those women were such druggies until the documentary. Who's the Go-Go's? Oh, I don't know. That sounds like old white music to me. I might tune in. I might tune into the Go-Go's. So, but thank you guys so much here for it, Hive, for um watching our video content. It's bonus video content over there. Um, and definitely. And that was in a cute outfit. <laughs> Jokes. Um, so go to hereforwardhive.com and support our show. Sahara, keep it cute. I want you to keep it cute. Our affirmation this week, because we have one. Only you can prevent forest fires. Honestly. It was an old commercial um, with Smoking the Bear back from back way, way, way back in the day. Um, but it can also pertain to your your life, your mental health, uh, your personal relationships, uh, your physical health. Because uh, I know a lot of people are avoiding uh, going to doctors, going to hospitals right now because pandemic and um, typical paranoia within the black community and definitely paranoia in the black gay community. But to prevent things from turning into full wildfires that don't have to exist, you can do the work before you are stuck in a burning house trying to put that fire out from the inside. You can prevent forest fires in your life if you just listen to Smokey the Bear. And his advice was only you can prevent forest fires you can't wait for other people to prevent forest fires in your life you can't wait for uh the fire department to come and put your fires out you can't wait for a man uh, a man and why are you dating during the pandemic like this (laughs) i ain't uh mm. (laughs) but you can prevent these forest fires you can you, as the person, as the individual, do not wait for a savior to prevent your forest fires. In any of those areas, um, you can prevent those forest fires. So that is our affirmation this week. Mm. Last week, we talked about dragging Atlanta. Mm-hmm. That was and, it seems so long ago. Wow. Girl, it's been seven days. <laughs> I know that's what I'm saying. The I'm like the world is going by so. Oh my god, a small town girl like me, I can't I, keep up. Believable. <laughs> um, so I'll get back to uh, Atlanta on my here for it, because. Mm. But first, if you're not watching Lovecraft Country, you're missing out. You are missing out. Um, it has LGBT representation throughout the the show. Uh, it has amazing storytelling, the visuals, the references. Um, Lovecraft Country told me that spit is lube this week. Come on, and I believe them. I can testify to the fact that spit does work. And I don't give a fuck what y'all Twitter freaks say. Rectal oh, well, gonorrhea. You gotta, have this. you gotta have that. Well, you can have gonorrhea with lube. Gonorrhea don't just come with spit. Condoms, y'all. Condoms. <laughs> but uh, 
I am highly recommending Lovecraft Country. Um, this is definitely a Jonathan Major Stan account over here. Um, it is is epic. Um, take your time. It's, it will build up to it. This past week's episode was by far the best episode, but they had so many references and so many good things wrapped up into one episode. I don't want to spoil anything because, uh, I mean, it's just a whole hour of enjoyment. Um, we had some some drag queens show up that I wasn't expecting. I was like, oh, who, oh, who was that? Uh-huh. Oh, wait. So I was very excited about that. Yeah, and the white woman who was um, the star of this week's episode, I was like, that's the same white woman from like episode one, right? Or episode two it was? Two. She was the white woman? Yeah. And she really played that role. And then the plot twist that happened down in the ba- with the basement, mm-hmm. it was so good. Love Crab Country. Y'all better get y'all cousin password. <laughs> Cause you gotta watch it in the HD. You can't just watch this on the bootleg. Now you know. I do yeah, don't bootleg. watch it. Don't watch it on the little bootleg myself. But um, this one you can't. You can't. Mm-mm, the quality hit different. No scissor. Um, Lovecraft. Cause you just gotta see it. And it, while you got the password, um, do look at Race by Wolves. It's a it's a slow burn, but Race by Wolves is getting to me as well. But I love I love Race by Wolves. I wasn't gonna recommend that because. It, it should. It really will only appeal to nerds and sci-fi people, not the yes. general audience. General audiences will not like Raised by Wolves because they'll be like, "What? What is this? What's going on?" General audiences will not like Raised by Wolves. But I see the subtexts in Raised by Wolves because I'm a cinephile and I, I I'm looking for those small things. And your basic TV watcher, movie goer is just trying to be really entertained and not look for those small things. But uh, next, I'm going to go ahead and get into um, the big story that people have been waiting for us to talk about. (sighs) Andrew Gillum. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got time. We got time. We can get through this. We can go down this yellow brick road. (laughs) Chill. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. So former Florida governor, uh, gubernatorial candidate, um, Andrew Gillum, uh, went on Tamron Hall um, this past week, and he went on there with his wife. Uh, he got Olivia Pope to put messaging together for him to get this shit together. Uh, mm-hmm. We previously reported on his uh, his incident. Has that been a year ago? When that was? All I remember is the um, disco ball on the dresser. They had played on partying up in there. Okay. Yeah, because no, we also talked about the blood pressure cuff because the blood pressure cuff was used in getting the drugs together. Pills. So they, it was yeah. a lot of things going on. I don't remember when it was, and even with the world coming to an end, I remember that story. Yeah. So I think that was about a year ago um, that this has happened, and he went to rehab. He got. He's out of rehab, and he's trying to tell his story and. Um, appeal to the American people so um, they won't throw him away and he can probably be elected to some other office again in the future. Um, But he came to Tamara Hall's show um, and he I don't want to say coming out because I don't feel like coming out is the right term for what he did. He admitted to being bisexual. I think Uh that's probably better. Because mm-hmm. it it's not really a coming out if a whole bunch of people already knew that you were in the LGBT community mm-hmm. at least at minimum. Um, so I didn't I didn't feel like it was a coming out. Um, I thought that the way that he's handling it, I really like. I like the way he's handling it. Um, it's also Bisexual Awareness Week. And I want to make sure before we get too deep in this, I uh, give the definition for bisexual uh, so people are abreast because there's a lot of confused people out there about bisexuality. Bisexual relating to or characterized uh, by sexual or romantic attraction, sexual or romantic attraction to people of one's own gender identity and or other gender identities, Uh multiple identities. So it don't have to be 
a man and a man or a man and, and a, a man, woman or a woman and a woman it can be a man and a woman trans people uh non binary um gender non conforming any people among the spectrum if you are attracted to more than one that means bi so that means bi means two when you break that down to the binary bi means two so all he has to do is either be sexually attracted or romantically attracted to one or more sexes to qualify quote unquote qualify as a bisexual i myself as a bisexual understand exactly what he's saying and i did not like the conversation that the gays were having about mm, here come the bisexuals again pretending that they bisexual and not gay you can just be gay where do y'all come from invalidating somebody else's experience when your experience has been invalidated your whole gay ass life people been telling you you're not really gay you just got a demon or you gonna get through it and you ain't gonna, gonna get you know, this is it. just a phase. Oh, They've Lord, been telling you that whole and you going to hell, and here you are trying to put somebody else into a purgatory because you don't understand bisexuality. Yes, I do believe that Andrew Gillum is bisexual. I think the problem that um we should be having, well, not we, his wife, because it's not our business, his wife should be having is the infidelity. Because if they have a monogamous relationship and not a monogamish relationship, then the problem is not who he was sleeping with or who he was fucking around with and who I he was writing notes while you're talking so I can make sure I address all the points that you're breaking up. Okay, so talk about the wife should be upset with the infidelity. Okay, uh huh. If they have a monogamous relationship, and we don't know if they have a monogamous relationship, we've talked about monogamish relationships on this podcast before, and that very well may be the case. Like his wife could just be like, um, I would like to be married to the next governor of Florida. And he literally almost was the next governor of Florida. And I believe that he probably got cheated out of that. But she could really just be, I just want to be married to the next governor of Florida and I'll have your babies. And, you know, I love you. But I also know that you are also into boys uh -huh. and I'm going to let you go out and play with the boys sometime just you know come back home at night before midnight whatever their understanding is mm -hmm. if that's their understanding cool if they don't have that understanding and this a monogamous relationship then that's the problem i don't even feel like the drugs is a problem i feel like the control of the drugs was a problem you know if you don't know how to do correctly take your drugs without overdosing then he admitted to alcoholism well it was more than alcohol girl it was <laughs> pills and other paraphernalia found so uh, I think that's a minor problem that maybe rehab helped him fix. Mm -hmm. But the infidelity, if this was a monogamous relationship, should be the problem and not whether he's bisexual or not. Because what is wrong with being bisexual? There is literally a whole bunch of us across the planet that identify as bisexual. Yes, I know the whole gay theory of men that are bisexual are going to continue to have sex with both sexes, but it depends on your relationship. I'm in my relationship. I'm not currently having sex with women. Would I have sex with a woman again in my lifetime? Maybe depending on what my husband allowed me to do or what we do together, but that's our relationship. And that's our understanding. Um, I, we have a monogamish relationship. We have an under, we have understandings about things and we have boundaries. We don't know what the boundaries between Andrew Gillum and his wife is or are. Well, I'm going to start with, I'm not going to get everything right because I am a gold star gay. Um, I'm yeah, relationships really aren't my thing to begin with. So, mm, and then understanding the rules of other people and what they got going on, chill. I just judge from the outside. I have a podcast. People ask my opinions. I'm expected to give opinions every week. Jesus Christ. But anyway, so get into it. What made, uh, what was the problem for me? He's bisexual, cool, cute. Why is this a news story? I don't give a shit. Cool. 
Um, <laughs> whatever he's about to say. He's a prominent politician. What was my problem was that his Andrew Gillum's masculinity makes it so much easier to accept his bisexuality. Um, there are feminine men, feminine presenting men who can be bisexual. They can. There are femme tops out here wearing the girls out, and I see on my timeline at least two or three times a week. Hey, you guys, stop um, avoiding these femme tops. They can change your life. So yeah, it's that- nothing wrong with a little <laughs> bisexual booty because bisexual booty is a blessing. It's bisexual bottoms out here that are lovely. It's no one. I don't think that that's a part of the, the real conversation of saying that only masculine men can be bisexual. Feminine men are bisexual as well, and they got babies. You know, I know plenty of feminine bisexual men with babies that uh, can do a one, two, one, Thumbed two, up. three, four, five count <laughs> in a, a twelve dip. load weekend. So, so- <laughs> and do drag. <laughs> so it just it it just appeared to me that it was so much easier for people to say yes he is bisexual is uh, just the same way that it's easier to digest um gay when it's two women and, th- and so if it was gay and it was him coming out saying like yes I am married. This was an affair that I had on my wife. The conversation would be so much different. And so I sat there trying to look at all the, my dumb ass. I'm like, well, let's look at the story this way. Let's look at the story that way. Well, what if he had went on to Tamron Hall and said this? And like, what does the wife's response look like in all of these different scenarios? And so I just be sitting here because I like, I want to try to say the right thing. But will I still get it right? No. <laughs> Um, well, it's not about getting it right. It's about understanding and learning and growing. So if you don't exactly understand, what I did. I yeah, did if you that. don't understand it, then talk to some bisexual people and learn and understand and grow. I, and so your comment about the wife should be upset about the infidelity if so, they have a monogamous relationship. If they don't have a monogamous relationship, then she don't got nothing to be mad about. The only thing she got to be mad about is. I got to sit up here and try to not be embarrassed. Okay. So there was like, I watched, I didn't see the full episode, but I did watch the Tamron Hall after show because she um, did a a virtual audience on Zoom with like 20 people. And then she had her social media person also reading comments from Twitter while the episode was premiering or whatever. So um, she was saying Andrew Gillum came to her while they were in college or while they were like 19 or 20 or something and told her that he was bisexual. And so then she stayed in the relationship and then he turned around and proposed to her. And she said, she knows that he's got some struggles, but she's definitely willing to stay with him. And so now that they're like in their late thirties, early forties, I don't know how old they are. And so she doesn't know. um, The question from Tamron Hall was knowing what was it? Da, 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 da. Knowing all Tamron Hall asked her, does she know if she will stay? Mm-hmm. And she all, said, knowing all that you know now, would you still stay? And so the wife said, she don't know. I mean, her relationship with her man and the commitments that they make to each other, cool, cute, that's what we do. But constantly explaining it, my relationship to Twitter and Instagram and coming to do public interviews on the Tamara Hall show, LOL. <laughs> you know, she said she didn't know if all this public opinion about her decision regarding her marriage, the promise that she that was made between her and him and God, hopefully. They said um, a covenant, quote unquote a covenant. So they were using the real Christian language. Okay, great. And so I was this is just the clip from on the after show. The wife said she didn't know if she was saved because she, Cool, she made an agreement with this man, but like having explained it to all y'all, this ain't what she signed up for. I'm like, girl, I feel you. Cause like girl, I I stayed. I accepted it. I did it. Okay. I mean, like, I'm not K Michelle. I'm not signing up for y'all public opinions. <laughs> I'm not taking my breaks I'm not putting my life on TV for y'all every day. Andrew Gillum wants to go uh, be a part-time lawyer and be a part-time social justice person on the internet and in real life. I support him through that, but I didn't sign up as the wife to be, I mean, damn, do I got an interview with Time Magazine or do I got an interview with um, the Atlantic about my role as first lady of something? No, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't even 
vicariously signed up for nothing. So leave me alone. Not <laughs> vicariously. It's vicariously. I think oh, <laughs> it's five <vicariously>. weeks. <laughs> uh, I said the big. I tried to use the big word. I used it wrong. Cool. So, um, but you, you don't know, know if she did or did not. That's that's the point that I'm making. Is she might fully well have known. Again, uh, um, the Funky Dineva covered. It was a forty five minute video. I couldn't get. I couldn't. Well, he had previously covered it before this, this his last video that the rumor was already out there. People had already knew from his college days that he was playing around and doing stuff. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. But that's why I don't feel like it's a coming out if so many people know. It's like I need the new girl. <laughs> it's, it's, a secret. It's, it's not to me. It's not coming out. Um, but I also relate the same story because oddly the same story is going on with Real Housewives of Potomac with um, Ashley Darby and her husband. Michael it Darby. Looks, mm-hmm. Yes. It looks very clearly that they have a understanding because he keep getting caught in all these gay ass situations. <sighs> but he's married to her and they're having babies. And so that's what he's if, he's, if he is clearly a bisexual, cool. But don't lie and be like... I don't know what y'all talking about. I don't be fucking around with them. Like, how the fuck do these people got pictures of you in your underwear? What? How? What? And multiple people heard you in the casino telling them something. You got a, a you boyfriend, got a girlfriend, and a wife. And a, wife. a boyfriend, so, well, something, whatever he said. So that that's the that's the other problem I have is there's nothing wrong wife. with being bisexual. It's the shame that comes with being bisexual. A lot of gay men believe that bisexual is a cop out. If it was such a cop out, more bisexual men would come out as bisexual, but it's not a cop out. It's still a shameful thing to talk about because there's so much disinformation and misinformation and not willing to understand bisexual people on both sides in the LGBT community and in the heterosexual community, because you're not going to find many heterosexual black women that would even want to talk to a bisexual man because, oh, just. It would sting so much more if he cheated on me with a man. Like Vivica A. Fox and Lisa Ray was talking about. Yes. Oh, it would just sting if he cheated on me with a man instead of. I'm strictly dickly. I gotta ask now. I gotta ask all my men have he ever had an experience before? Said Vivica A. Fox, and then Lisa Ray responds with, "Well, girl, you gotta put your finger back there, and if he jumped, then that mean you can't play back there. So that mean he a man, sweetie. Tops are out here." I can put my finger back there, and the man still jump and tell me don't do that, (laughs) or punch you. So uh, mm. just because Lisa Ray put her finger back there, so and Vivica A. Fox eat booty. So why are you, <laughs> we having this conversation? Vivica Vivica A. Fox very well may have eaten some bisexual booty. So again, if you not qualified, people were saying they homophobic. I don't know. If they may I, homophobic, I don't. I, I don't think it's. I don't think it's homophobia because they are also the type to have. Seven gay friends. They hold Ooh. Glam Squad be gay. Here so we go. it. I got stop, a gay cousin. Stop me when I lie. <laughs> stop me when I lie. Because they have all these gay people around them. They don't feel like it is hom- homophobia, whether it's overt or covert homophobia. Ooh. There's a a difference because your overt co- homophobia comes from uh, Kim Burrell. That's very overt homophobia. Like she don't mince no words. We know this bitch is homophobic, though she still got well had a, a gay hairdresser because I think he quit. Um, but what she does and says is overt homophobia. What these other women that surround themselves with gay purses, basically, because you just using them as a fucking a item, just just a, a accessory. If you just have a gay accessory around you, but you still don't seek to understand gay people, don't seek to understand the gay struggle or understand uh, other members of the LGBT community or put these fake ass tests up for men to find out if they gay or bisexual, that is covert homophobia. Like you are covertly homophobic whether you know it or not and you're not willing to learn or do any research to figure out uh what i'm saying is problematic and i probably shouldn't be saying these things and definitely shouldn't be doing these things i should be 
measuring the character of the man and not whether uh, he ever had dick in his ass before. What? What does that have to do with you? What does it have to do with your relationship? Allegedly. Anyway, so um, I'm glad that he and his publicist and his PR team put this together for Bisexual Awareness Week because it did spark a lot of conversations around bisexuality that I think that we still need to have because it's people in the LGBT community that don't know enough, not willing to learn enough, uh, willing to shit on their fellow community members, but also ask for support and love as a gay person or as a lesbian, because some of the lesbians chimed into the conversation as well. And I was like, but we support y'all ass all the time. And so when bisexual people say I'm bisexual. And they definitely have experience with um, being with the woman and then she go back to her boyfriend. Yeah. Well, so, bisexuality is not limited to yes. men. It's yes. not yes. limited to men. So when people tell you you're not really a lesbian, uh, come take some dick and then you'll you'll find out and you'll be a real heterosexual. You'll come back to the, the, the good side and you won't be worried about no pussy no more. That's wrong. And it is wrong. But you can't see that saying something against someone being bisexual is just as wrong. Help me. Help me, LGBT community. Because the B in LGBT is for bisexual. So if we don't exist, why are we even in the same community? Who 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 is the bisexuals then if there are no bisexuals that exist? If everybody that say they're bisexual is faking and not for real, then why the fuck are we even a part of the community? Why are we are y'all confused out there? Okay. More than two identities. Anyway, so um Andrew Gillum, uh good luck. <laughs> Godspeed going forward. Uh, I I see what you're doing uh, and hopefully other bisexual people out there are uh, just as willing to talk about their experiences and to stand firm in being bisexual and say fuck it to all these other people that are like oh well but the bisexual experience is fake and you're, you're just copping out um, okay well there are men who like um, people assigned female at birth and then they're also um that are into like transsexuals and things yes. like that. So transgender women. So you can be but into there are like words, there are words for those you know, as well. I don't know, like I don't know if the, I'm using all the right words there, but there are people who like identify as like heterosexual women. Then there's transgender women who uh still like men. So there's still a bisexuality version as well. Like it's so many you can do multiple things. Yeah, but let people identify as where they are in their journey. So I identified as bisexual to my mother when I very first came out to my mother because I was like, oh, yeah, okay, I'm definitely bisexual because I'm still fucking around with girls and I like men and I'm still fucking around with men. So yeah. bisexual. Uh, and then, of course, my family thought the same thing of, well, he really gay, but he just trying to like land it softly on us. And then I just had boyfriend after boyfriend after boyfriend and no girlfriends. And then they were like, mm, definitely gay. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> uh, you're not with me in the bedroom when I'm smashing this pussy. You're not. So you can't tell me how to identify. If I'm telling you I'm bisexual, I'm sexually attracted to more than one orientation of people then that is the definition of bisexuality. And that's why I open with the definition because apparently people don't fucking read definitions. You don't, I don't have to have a boyfriend and a girlfriend to be bisexual. And I'm have not telling my mom about everybody in the middle because I don't want her asking about them. <laughs> like, no, I'm not going to tell you when I smashed Tasha because I don't want you asking about Tasha for the next 10 years. <laughs> right. I was literally, I was, I was in Austin, Texas, fucking a girl in the bathroom one Saturday, and then maybe three days later, I was back in Colleen, Texas, fucking a boy off of um, Craigslist. You can't tell me about my journey. You can't tell me my journey. You can worry about your journey. So, moving on. <clears throat> um, 
respected director, producer, um, Patrick Ian Polk, uh, that we know from Noah's Ark fame, uh, what was it, Blackbird? Yeah. And what was the other one? A movie called Punks that came out that Punks. people really Punks love? was original. Damn. Shit, I'm old and I remember Punks, but that was <laughs> further away from me. Anyway, so he did all of those great black gay things. Mm-hmm. He came out to Twitter um, the other day and... He responded to a question somebody asked. Right? Uh, I don't see the question. Maybe the question... They were set. I don't want to spoil the story that you're about to say, but okay. Tell well, the story. Okay, well, if you find a question, then tell me the question. What I see was him saying, Elon Harris was my friend. Questionable. We were literally planning the adaption the day he died. Years later, after buying the rights to um, Invisible Life. Invisible Life was uh, one of Elon Harris's greatest books. If you don't know who Elon Harris is or you don't know Invisible Life, please go look it up. It is an awesome, awesome book, awesome trilogy, followed up with other great literary works that Elon Harris did. Again, um, my old gays out there will know, but the new gays are still being introduced to stuff like this. So he's saying he bought the rights. And HBO is now developing Invisible Life, but refused to even meet with him. Um, He said that they were saying he's not a big enough name um, and you can't make this stuff up. Hashtag white Hollywood. Um, My question is, if you bought the rights, how in the fuck is HBO doing it? without the person that bought the rights when you buy the rights to something then you get to do what you want to do with that property uh if you own the rights to invisible life after elon harris's death and you were planning on doing it uh where have you been because elon harris has died i i I feel like it's been more than 10 years since elon harris died Mm -hmm. so if you bought the rights elon harris is no longer here you had the air the opportunity and the space to bring invisible life to film or TV, however you want to do it. Why have you not done that? And if HBO is doing it and they don't want to, they do must it want to get sued. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, it don't make, it, it does not make sense. And so if they're just doing invisible life, just to be doing invisible life and they don't have the rights to do it, then this is an open and shut case. You take the ass to court and be like, look, here's the paperwork where I bought it. I've owned it for this amount of years. I've been planning on working with this property. And the judge is going to be like, cool, uh, HBO, get the fuck out of here. And drop the check off on your way out. We need a wire deposit. Yeah, um, and pay pay his legal fees. <laughs> and emotional distress. Born in Flint, Michigan. Shout out to um, Eli Harris. Born in Flint, Michigan yes. and died July um, 2009. So, yes, yeah. he's been gone Michigan from birth. us for a decade. Yeah, so, so yeah. If you own the rights, and again, I love Patrick Ian Polk, Mm -hmm. but this did not make sense to me. Um, And I want to see Invisible Life so bad. I really want to see Invisible Life. I don't give a fuck if it's a movie. I don't give a fuck if it's a Netflix special. I don't give a fuck if it's a TV show. I want to see Invisible Life brought to life. And we'd Um, all tune in the same way we tuned into the Noah's Ark reunion. Um, Hopefully it don't have to be a socially distanced thing like they had to do for Noah's Ark. But there was the conversation being had on Twitter. Somebody said they miss Elaine Harris. And then somebody said, I wish they'd make his his books in the movies. And then somebody said, girl, let me tell you, Patrick Ian Polk will slay it. They could turn my book into a series too while they get it. So they were... There was some banter about with his name included on the timeline. And so he quote tweeted it and then he added his response and um, did the hashtag White Hollywood. But it looks like the hashtag White Hollywood was trending back in 2019 because I searched the hashtag and a lot of these tweets were. I remember I remember that that tweet conversation from last year. Um, I don't know if we talked about it on the show, but I remember that tweet conversation about bringing Invisible Life uh, up and so I don't know how he injected himself into your old tweets, um, and I I don't know how. Well, the drag was uh, relevant, okay. 
is trying to do a scam. These if, white if people it's, and if their lawyers sc- trying to do a scam. I don't, I don't, I don't believe that. I'm sorry, and I'm on. I would love to be on Patrick and Polk's side, but uh, he should either be in court or be showing receipts to the internet if this is true, because we, as a community, w- would like to see Elon Harris's work and people that don't even know Elon Harris's work should see Elon Harris's work. Um, and I don't care if Patrick and Polk does it or if HBO does it. I just think it should be done. I kind of would like to see it done with the HBO budget. No shade because, um, I would like to see it done with the HBO budget. Uh, I believe the HBO uh, has been able to find uh, LGBT talent and then match it with their budget for these different projects. A lot of these different projects that they brought to uh, their streaming channel and their regular channel. So I don't believe that if they were doing Invisible Life, it would just be old white men doing it. That doesn't make sense to me. So that's why I'm like, this is not just all white Hollywood because white Hollywood could just be financing a black ass project. And I'm okay with that. Ta da! Money. Money. Oh, shout out to I Love Crap Country. Money. When they came out, I was like, ah! Okay, so you want to do that, man? No. <laughs> I don't what? know what you're talking about. What? Because you brought up Cardi B. <laughs> oh, where are we going? Oh, what happened? I don't know what you're about to talk about at all. <laughs> no nigga want to be my ex. I love when he go on tour because he comes more when I see him less. I get up, set off. I turn off, set on. And like I told y'all, back when Motorsport originally even came out, do you really turn off set on? Because if you turn off set on, you ain't the only one. And apparently she ain't the only one because they're getting a divorce. So the only um the only person I'm concerned about is culture at this point, because both of them have been stupid throughout this whole marriage. Um I don't have no sympathy for Cardi, and I don't have I definitely don't have no sympathy for offset. Um I'm mad that it was like like big news story, like trending as big as it was. I was like, oh, okay, groundbreaking. Well, the number one song this week is WAP. And she said, I don't cook, I don't clean, but let me tell you how I got this ring. It's the number one song in the country this week. And you also announced your divorce. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, all right. Well, you, you got to tell us a different you got to tell us a different way to get rings because if, <laughs> if you ain't cooking and you ain't cleaning and you got that ring and you about to take that ring off. Shout out to Beyonce. Come on. Um, I'm going to say. <laughs> you got to take that ring off. If you know, you know. Um, <laughs> and so if you got to take that ring off because you ain't been cooking and cleaning and or whatever else, then you need to tell us some other ways. And I don't think it was really that. I just think the nigga was a bird. He was a bird when she met him. Atlanta. He's, he's he of Atlanta. A bird when she met him. He's been a bird the whole marriage. Ain't changed his goddamn feathers. He's gonna be a bird. And she was just like, if I just, if I announce to the world that we're married because they were hiding their marriage for a while, if I announce to the world that we're married, this will save our marriage. It didn't. If I have a baby with this nigga, it'll save our marriage. It didn't. If I get his nigga a whole bunch of money on camera for his birthday, it'll save our marriage. It didn't. So, and this is not just a Cardi problem. It's a, a marriage problem everywhere. Not even just in heterosexual marriages and homosexual marriages as well. We have seen a whole bunch of these homosexuals. Um, that sounded homophobic. A whole, a whole bunch. <laughs> and bisexuals. A whole, yeah, we've seen a, okay, a whole bunch of marriages across the board end in months. Literally watching them on Instagram, Instagram and Twitter <laughs> and then they have to delete the goddamn marriage pictures because girl mm. <clears throat> no date your bio take their ring out <laughs> y'all damn. need to go to counseling y'all need to go to counseling so is there something that you can learn from this in your marriage not to marry a bird nigga <laughs> so I, I started off 
<laughs> I started off winning with that. Okay, and, so that I don't uh, know. We has... did premarital counseling as well uh, to make sure that we weren't uh, too incompatible, that we would not uh, be broken up in three months. So uh, we won there. Okay. So shout out to that story. Um, the next one is a a, a great positive story. Um, I don't know when the fuck we're gonna see this show because <sighs> pandemic. But Pose season three is about is about to start filming allegedly. Um, I don't know how they're doing that pandemic wise. But, but the posi- the the COVID positivity rate has been really great in New York State. So they'll probably just seclude somewhere and they'll probably make a bubble like the NBA is doing. And I hope so. I'm hoping so. Because I don't want none of, none of the girls to be at risk. Yeah, limited locations and things like that. Um, but they have admitted that the next season is going to jump to 1994. <clears throat> That's where he said he wanted it to end when they find the cure. So, well, when they find it, not the cure. Oh, I sound like Donald Trump. When they <laughs> treatments, yes, when they start finding valid treatment options, this is when Ryan, Ryan Murphy, ooh, words said that he wanted the show to end. So is he also teasing that this is the that's last what season? I, that's what I'm saying. Um, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Ooh, since he's on, like a, a announcing that is jump into 1994, um, this very well may be our last season of Pose, yep. and they released a picture that I thought was very questionable. I like the picture. Um, Where is it? Where can I find it? It's all. It was all over Twitter. Um, it's on. It's, uh, I think I saw it on MJ's page. And, okay. Um, Jay Rodriguez. Um, I think on Damon's page. I forgot what Damon's real name is. Um, but the notable thing about the picture was Billy Porter was not in the picture. Everybody from the cast was in the picture. And the other notable thing was India Moore's titties was out. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, oh, she's moving forward. Okay, okay. Yes, and I applaud it. She should. Flex. Flex on them. Flex. But um, I hope that that's not telling us something about this next season that they done fucked around and killed Billy Porter off. Um... It was interesting to me. Um, I am very interested in, in definitely seeing them in um, 90s fashions um, and seeing where the HIV AIDS uh, crisis was in 1994 and what stories they're going to talk about. <clears throat> because this was um, some pivotal years in um, the HIV AIDS epidemic mm-hmm. so poll season three uh coming soon we don't know when we'll we will just hope for the best for i guess maybe next summer maybe <sighs> i'm excited i'm so excited i'm so excited um last but not least jk rowling author of harry potter books Allegedly. Um, She has been on this trans hate train for a while now. I don't even know. I can't even say if it's been a year or two years. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with this white woman. It is something wrong. There has been a trans person that has done something to her to make her this fucking hateful in life. They fucked her, man. I don't... Or she got catfished. Um, oh, um, Twiggy Garcon just tweeted that they are casting Legendary Season 2 for HBO Max. Hey, shout yeah, out. I'm going to retweet that. They, uh, they're they getting new judges. A couple new judges. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm taking a toast to that. Uh, but J.K. Rowling... Okay, but back to J.K. Okay, You put me on Twitter looking for the Ryan Murphy picture, but okay. Mm-hmm. Um... J.K. Rowling is putting out a new book, um, and it is quote unquote about a transvestite serial killer. So that's how old and problematic this dumb bitch is. Is she still would address a trans person as transvestite? 
And it's, how, it's called a, it's, a like, it's called a who a transvestite serial killer. Yeah, that's the name. That's the description that she put out. Transvestite serial killer. Uh, the story is reported on New Now Next. Um, and so after all of her transphobic comments over the last, I feel like it's been a couple years. She had the nerve to say, you know what? I'm going to write a transsexual character. You didn't give a fuck about transsexual people. You said transsexual people weren't even real people. You said all this hateful, hateful shit about the trans community. And then you were like, I'm going to put pen to paper and write a trans story. What in the fuck is wrong with you? You wrote the Harry Potter franchise about magic and unreal shit and you feel like trans people are just as unreal as the magic dragons and fucking wizards and shit that you wrote about that can't be found in real life mm. when was the last time you saw a dragon when was the last time you saw any of the, the fucking creatures that you wrote about in, in the Harry Potter books you haven't seen any of that shit any fucking where it's not real those things are not real. Those things can't be proven. We can prove that transsexual people exist. There can be, I, I can point to a whole bunch exist. of trans people yes. that are, are real people in the world. And okay, shout out so, to our trans listeners. Yeah, absolutely. We be trying, y'all. We be trying to be. But that's why I'm reporting on this because <sighs> it's evidence of the ignorance that is in the world of people that are willfully ignorant. Like she literally made hundreds of millions of dollars writing fiction, fantasy fiction, and then was like, you know what I'm going to do next? A trans story. A trans serial killer. So not only am I going to make a trans story, but I'm going to make the trans person the bad guy. Scary. Ooh, scary. A trans person is coming to kill you. Who is being killed in this world right now? And you know the what trans- she probably was sending to me like, oh my gosh, we're going to flip the story on its head. And so instead of the trans person being killed, what if the trans person trans is person. the serial <laughs> You see where I'm going? You see Rebecca, where I'm going? sit down, Rebecca. That is, Rebecca, you're not innovative. <laughs> sit down, Rebecca. Sit down, Lindsay. And sit down, J.K. Rowling. What and the sit fuck? Down, Karen. <laughs> It is such a caring move. It's such a caring move of J.K. Rowling. Uh, um, so I didn't get far far in the article because it was I, dumb. I, I, it was dumb. Because I see some of those headlines and I'd be skipping them. <laughs> um, a, again, the only ones I skipped this week were the the crimes and uh, the Breonna Taylor settlement shit. Twelve million dollars. Like, I'm not. It's not enough, bro. I don't. I'm, I don't feel like being drunk. In the least, twelve million dollars, and they still ain't enough. And but anyway, yeah. So I was like, if I read this, I'm. And I'm, here in DC, um, some man has been convicted after murdering a trans woman, um, a few years ago. So I think they get, I think they gave him life. But so I just, I was just like, like you were saying a few weeks ago, like looking at these stories. Oh my gosh, I, I clicked on the story. I said that last I, week. It, it ain't even been that long ago. Oh, uh, that's all. Like, oh, we were drinking Atlanta last week. I don't know how many weeks ago that was, but um, you know, trying to be, trying to be, a, but that's the goal to tire you out. Trying to be an ally for the trans community, so we want to make sure we're staying on top of the stories, and we want to make sure we're looking and having the conversations. But I'm tired, y'all. But then, like I also said last week, what about the girls? The, the trans people can't be tired. The trans people can't be tired. <laughs> like. Oh, I'm gay. I could just go over here and, you know, I'll be an ally next week with some cute No, you, I we, can't, we I a can't. part of the same community should use our different privileges. <clears throat> and so if the people with the least amount of privileges are trans people, particularly uh, black trans black. women, mm-hmm. if they are the persons with the least amount of privileges, um, it is our duty as people with at least a little bit of privilege, because we ain't got much. Our black, yes, black man. so we ain't got that much. But if I got a little bit of privilege, then I should be supporting you 
if you got less than me so I can get you up to the same playing field. I want us to all progress. If we're all not progressing, then none of us are going to progress. If I'm I can't... injustice anywhere, it's an injustice everywhere. Oh, what's up, they be saying? Well, okay, yeah, that was close. God bless you. <laughs> um, but fuck J.K. Rowling. Um, Literally. And... Uh, no, because no one wants to fuck that. Like the, like they did on Love Country this week. Fuck her like that. <laughs> With the heel, red bottoms, <laughs> long heels, red bottoms, and that's all I say on that. Uh, and execute Ed Buck. Ed Buck is still alive, breathing the same air on Earth that I am, and that is a privilege that he should not have. Uh, he still needs to get the fuck out of here, and I am committed to that cause. Not directly. I'm not uh, planning an assassination attempt yet, but uh, I do believe that he should be executed in prison and no longer be um, receiving benefits from my tax money, because if y'all want me to pay taxes every goddamn day when I spend money, and at the end of uh, every April, well, beginning of every April, uh, I don't want to put my tax money towards feeding Ed Buck and keeping him alive and or healthy. Yeah, and here in D.C., I pay a lot of taxes, so uh, <laughs> I really would not like to be contributing to Ed Buck in any capacity, federal or local. Um, but the New York Times did a feature story on the situation around Ed Buck um, and the black men who have been murdered in his home. Um, and the neighbors were um, saying that the black people would just come randomly knock on, I mean, ring all of their doorbells because they didn't know which apartment that he lived in, but they knew that it was a white savior over there. A white Quote demon. What they call him? The white something, the, the white demon or something would live over there and they would just need us to get more drugs. Um, so it's also, uh, I've shared it on here for a pod's Twitter and it's also a 57 minute um, piece that you can listen to which is actually the article being read out loud if you don't want to do 57 minutes of reading and I was like oh girl I gotta come back to this so I'm gonna make time to read it this week um, or listen to it I'll probably do better with that it's kind of like a podcast so listening to the New York Times story covering the Ed Buck situation because I really want to know what people's opinions are and I'm not seeing the New York Times story being retweeted that much um, and I think there should be And New York Times also did not tweet it even though it's on their website because I went to New York Times Twitter to just retweet the New York Times because that's a great branded news source I wanted to retweet them but they're not re- they're not posting their own news story on their Twitter. And I wonder if that's because a scheme set up by Todd, but Well, I read some of it. Um it, it was a lot. But what the story is basically detailing uh is what it was like for uh the different men that were coming and going mm-hmm. and what it was like for the neighbors. Um because they were like literally watching him traffic drugs and traffic men through his apartment and again if y'all was caring enough to fucking report somebody for barbecuing in a parking lot or in a park why y'all not caring enough to report somebody trafficking drugs and trafficking men how was this going on so long and, and nobody was reporting this to the police where was Probably because he was giving was donations to the police. Then? Where was your caring powers then? Because the only time the police was coming was when a nigga was dead. And the story opens up that when the police got there, um, when Tim died, the porn was still playing on the TV. and The, the drugs dead, were still out. The drugs were still out. And he's dead on the bed. So they're like, hmm, we don't know what happened here, but we don't want to convict him of anything. And he still don't have no drug charges, because let let me walk around with a pound. Well, not in detail, yeah, an uh, ounce, uh, uh, a amp. pound, a pound of any type of drug you can think of. Girl, they're gonna lock my black ass up for twenty years just for trafficking. <laughs> so execute Ed Buck. He got to get the fuck out of here. I'm tired of him um, soaking up tax dollars. I'm tired of him breathing the same air that I breathe on this planet. Um, he needs to go talk talk to God. He needs to go to timeout, and that timeout. Needs to be permanent. Sorry. Not sorry. And thank you guys so much for um, uh, sending us the updates because we got an email. We got linked on our Tumblr. We, y'all definitely make sure we get the airbook updates. So thank you guys so much for 
um, tweeting us and using the hashtag execute that book, convict that book. And here for a hive. Oh well, and of course our own. That's for good. That's for good things. But this Ed book bull mess crap. We we're all in this together. So I'm glad that our listeners, you guys, are here for it. Hive, are in it with us. Thank you. We love you. What's the song for your song? My dumb ass did not write down the song because I know you always write the song lyrics in your notes, so you always be having it. I'm studious. Cute and be doing dramatic readings, and I really okay. want us to do a dramatic well, reading of this. Okay. But Lettucey's new album, The Wild Card, has been out since August 28th, and so it has taken me a couple weeks to get to it. Um, Lettucey, next time, my lyrics. Okay, it has taken me a little time to get to it, but you know, I got to it over the weekend. Lyrics have not been released. Oh, here we go. Glad it's night next time. Okay, but anyway, so Lettucey's new album, The Wild Card, is really good. It's her first independent album, and so listening to the music, like the literal, like the drum and the guitar and the whatever the other instruments are, I don't know about band. Um, so it was definitely like a live music album. And she definitely had planned on going on tour this fall with this album, but the world. <clears throat> oh, and I just coughed. Am I living or am I dead? Wow. <laughs> um, mm. And so it is a great live band album. It's just so good. There are songs like Anything For You um, and the upbeat song that I like is called Weekend, W-K-N-D. Um, and the song for my soul is Next Time. She says, um, oh, I can't find the lyrics on the internet and it's making me sad. Is this like all R and B, like old R and B or like new R and B? Well, it, stuff? it 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 is like a, a legacy R and B type of album. So it sets like sl- mostly sets like slow songs and she's give you her vocal stylings the way Legacy does vocal stylings. And she was talking about um, it's really great that you thought I was going to forgive you and you thought that there would be a next time, but there won't. And you thought that, um, you know, I was just going to take you back and I won't. Ain't no next time. Get your shit and go. Basically. But I can't find the lyrics. To the left, to the left. I forgot to put the lyrics in my nose. I'm a horrible person. Um, but Lettucey's new album, The Wild Card. If you have Apple Music, listen to the songs with stars by them first. I'll tell you that now. All 13, 14 tracks, they ain't all hits. But if you clean up the house, you really can't just put the album on and let it play. It's one of those put it on and let it play album. It's not like one of those, you got to tune in for verse 2 of track 7 because you ain't going to know until you like the beat, but you don't know the words. But the album overall is Legacy. Legacy. It's her seventh album. You know what Legacy gives. So um, well, next time, by Legacy. Well, speaking of albums that you can uh, put on and let ride, uh, and you can do some riding while you're playing them. Hello. Uh, this album, like I promised last week, um, is responsible for a lot of orgasms. Definitely a lot of children came from this, this album. And um, it's all hits. It all hits. It hits like grits. It hits like a good blunt. Yeah. So, you know, like you can get a blunt and somebody didn't roll it right or, you know, it's just horrible, cheap ass weed. It's not that. This is this is indica rolled right. And if you know the difference between sativa and indica, you know what indica does. This album is indica rolled right. There must have been an angel by my side. Something heavenly led me to you. Look at the sky. You look at the sky. It's the color of love. There must have been an angel by my side. Something heavenly down from above. He led me to you. He led me to you. He built a bridge to your heart all the way how many tunnels of love inside two i can't say girl that's your tunnels <laughs> and your tunnels are dry so we're not talking about that 
when I when I was led to you, I knew you were the one for me. I swear the whole world could feel my heartbeat. When I lay eyes on you, you wrap me up in the color of love. You gave me the kiss of life. It sounds so familiar. I know because I'm, I'm damn near singing the, the song. <laughs> kiss of life. You gave me. That's like the kiss of life. Sade took oh. her whole foot out and stomped it on this album. The album is Love Deluxe from 1993. Again, uh, I could I could have all of the songs from the album as songs from my soul because they're you can't you could literally play it from start to end and play it again if you fucking right. If y'all got a, a long sesh, play the album from start to end and then start that motherfucker over and do it again. Because that is what this album gives. Love Deluxe by Sade. The song for my soul is Kiss of Life. Um, if you are kissing niggas and it ain't the kiss of life, kiss some more niggas. Don't kiss that one no more. They be like, if your dick don't get hard while y'all kissing, he the wrong. He not the one. He not the one. <laughs> he not the one. He not the one. So get you the kiss of life. Uh, if you are unaware of Sade Kiss of Life, if you are unaware of Sade Deluxe uh, Love, go and listen to it right now. It is absolutely free uh, on YouTube, but I would like for y'all to give her some streams. And so if you do streaming on Apple, Tidal, Spotify, whatever, uh, make sure you do that. I told y'all I was going to bring this up again from last week because uh, y'all told me uh, this new nigga shit about Janae Aiko versus Sade and uh, no uh, the answer was no last week the answer is no this week and uh, once you start listening to more Sade music you will understand why the answer is no and I'm so sorry about it well actually no I'm not no I'm not uh, well saying that you were sorry about it was actually the the hype the, the, what's it called when I say this but I mean another thing Oh, and I studied English in school. Hyperbole. Bam, that's the word I was thinking about. I was like, I don't know if that's the right big word. Okay. <laughs> you keep telling I, people you studied English, but you don't. I be knowing, you, but I don't. But I don't you know. you would have to give that degree back, my love. You <laughs> you can't you can't keep saying that and then not knowing the English language. You have to be knowing the English language <laughs> if you know say it. I just need to send it in and Google. It's, if it was a blog post, I could google it right quick but since this is a live podcast I don't but have anybody to, uh, that didn't even study english can do google everybody does google and synonyms if you guys have listener questions don't forget that you guys can submit them to us to any inbox where you can find us on social media um we prefer here for a pod at gmail.com just to let you know send us any questions on social media this week i am absolutely here for matt baum m-a-t-t B-A-U-M-E in his YouTube series called Culture Cruise where he revisits gay episodes of older TV shows. He recently covered the lesbian episode of Living Single where Maxine Shaw's old roommate comes into town, down to the New York and she wants Max to meet her um, fiance Chris. So they're all big up in Chris. Chris. Oh, okay, so my homegirl get married to Chris. And then the door opens, and then the old roommate is like, hey, it's a girl at the door. She said, hey, y'all, I want y'all to meet Chris. And so it was a lesbian episode of Living Single back in the 90s. So as it turns out, um, having a gay episode of your show was a really popular thing in the 90s. And so also this show called Rock back in 1991 featured the first ever commitment ceremony seen on primetime TV. So the man who played Shaft in the Black Exploitation movie, um, so from 1971, he became infamous because he was Shaft and the black community loved Shaft. And so in 1991, he got married to a white man in the first ever commitment ceremony on primetime TV. And so Matt Baum breaks down the in his culture cruise series, he breaks this down and he does research and he brings in the Pew research study, um, stories from the thoughts of 
um, gay marriage in 1991. You really got to follow the whole series because he did, of course, because Matt Baum is a white man now, just breaking news. Matt Baum also breaks down like episodes of Frasier uh, and other shows that had gay episodes anywhere from like the 1960s to like the 1990s. So Culture Cruise by Matt Baum. Search that on YouTube and get into it. Get Richard into Roundtree it. married a white man on TV? He did. He did. He did. <laughs> I was... I've I never was, heard of that. Never seen that. Richard I, Roundtree is like one of them old... I am like going somebody's to uncle. send you the link. I will, I'm going to send you the link and I'm going to post it on my Twitter. Okay. Like Richard but, Roundtree was like one of them old... Like them old school 1970s, I don't play that shit type of niggas. Like, so he was also marrying somebody named Chris, and so everybody was sitting there on the couch, like, oh, what if it, the way my brother? I guess it was they were brothers. So he was like, well, if my brother married somebody, marrying Chris, I know she a bad bitch. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, well, I'm gay, no, 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 and no Chris, Chris is a man. Um, <laughs> and then so he was like, what? And he was like. Well, there's also something else I need to tell y'all about Chris. They were like, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, don't tell us no more," because today has been heavy. And then there's a knock at the door, and the door opens, and it's a white man. And then everybody's like, oh. "Then it goes to commercial." <laughs> but Culture Cruise by Matt Baum, it's a really great series on his YouTube channel, and I'm absolutely mm-hmm. here for it. Yeah, I'm absolutely here for that. I, I definitely want to see that and see if that's really Rich Roundtree because I don't, I don't know about that. I don't believe that. I'm like, mm, <laughs> Rich Roundtree is not that type of nigga. Apparently, I thought wrong. Maybe. Speaking of types of niggas, um, <laughs> what I'm not here for is dumb ones. Um, a popular dumbass, uh, mm, I'll say social influencer. I guess that's what y'all would call him a social influencer. Anybody with 5,000 followers. Yeah, he got more than that, but he's popular uh, in Atlanta. Um, He's popular in Atlanta, and uh, he exposed how stupid he was on Twitter uh, by attempting to fire back at those of us who made fun of the stupid punks that Pack themselves into compound during Atlanta Pride. I don't work jobs, bitch. I am a job. You don't like it? Take a hike. Pay me for it. Suck a slot. I'm a rich ass bitch with an attitude. Pipe it down. For I hope you like your mama do. Period. And them dumb ass bitches as well. <laughs> uh, mm, it's a lot of dumb people out here. Huh? Um. So we have been talking about the the people that have crowded into compound and crowded all over each other. Nobody was wearing no masks. Nobody was taking any precautions. People were just saying, fuck it. Um, I need to twerk my ass and be out here and be fighting in Atlanta and doing all the most uh, during Atlanta Pride. And this one popular uh, social media person, again, I'm not shouting him out because, girl, he don't need no attention, no more attention. Um, so he was saying that, uh, we were wrong for saying negative things about being Atlanta pride and compound and everything like about that. It. Yes. We and had opinions since- about compound <clears throat> every other motherfucking weekend during the summer, June, July, August, September. How many weeks is that? 12, 18 weeks. We've had an opinion about it. All 18 fucking weeks of the summer. And if we got an opinion about what happened at Compound this weekend, tune in to hear for what pod because I have an opinion about it, bitch. So he was saying that since it's been 14 days since Pride um, and they haven't died yet, that... Uh, you can't prove that. You can't track that. The numbers in Georgia is going up weekly. Keisha's still out here begging people to stay at home. And you know what they're not doing? That. Yes. And so I wish that the lower IQ, uninformed, loud and wrong niggas would go away or at least be fucking quiet. I wish that you would. I wish that y'all would stop speaking no manners, that you don't have anything, uh, any data to prove, uh, any points to make besides I feel this way and this is my opinion. Uh, It's mine too. Well, 
I, I mine is, recognition mine is mine. more than God opinion. bless you. Yeah, I mean, if you're not a medical professional, who is expect who is respecting your opinion at this point on medical matters or public health matters? You have no experience in these matters. So what are you talking about? You talking about the oh, so you were one of the ones that were out fucking around and one of the ones that are continuing to be out fucking around without masks in groups of hundreds, probably more, um, just doing whatever the fuck you want to, quote unquote, living your life cool, and you haven't died yet or you haven't got sick yet. Dope. I I don't understand. Uh, why you think that since you were playing Russian roulette with your life, that that doesn't mean you are also playing Russian roulette with the people around you's life. So just because you don't get sick does not mean that you are not spreading a virus around to other people that will eventually get sick. Data shows that. If you like read stuff, it will show you and tell you why there is still almost a thousand people dying a day still why what how do you think these people are dying are they they're they're, they're staying not mentioned, home and dying? They're not mentioning they socks with their shoes that's how they die it's almost two hundred thousand people that are dead and your point is well we didn't die yet so girl fuck it let's go back to the club Worst the peach yet. party was wrong the shootout at she's atlanta was wrong being in at the club, not wearing mask was wrong. All of it was wrong. All of Worse. it was wrong. Worse yet, they were. There were birds who agreed with him, and I, I guess I expect that because this person has um, thousands, thousands of followers, and of course, uh, you also would have to be dumb to follow him, and so I believe that you are just as dumb as he is if you are following him and then be- believe the same things that he believes. So I guess I shouldn't be si- that surprised at that. Um, but I mean, it's fine if you want to die. Um, it's fine if you didn't die and, or if you didn't die yet, because y'all still playing these games, like you just going to be fucking immortal and it's a video game and you got three more lives. And so even if you fall down, once and get killed in this part of the video game you'll get back up and you'll be fine yeah that's some people are surviving but there are long term effects from this virus that they're still studying and don't know the answers to yet so why would you play the game of well I'll get it and then I'll be fine maybe or you could just not get it wouldn't that be smarter wear your mask in the words of Andrew Caldwell, socially distanced. You have to do both of them in conjunction. I think that's the word to go there. In conjuncture, whatever the big word is. You're supposed to do them both. Dr. Fauci told us. It, but it's not even just Dr. Fauci. And that's why I'm like, these niggas that are doing, saying these things, they don't even know who the fuck Dr. Fauci is. They don't even know what a fucking Dr. Fauci is. They have not turned on a news program, read anything they are just looking looking at the world around them, and that's not enough. You can look at the world around you, and it looks a little normal or getting back to normal, but that don't mean it is, and that don't mean that you should resume normal practices. Well, it's Atlanta, so what is normal practices? A 24-load weekend? <laughs> Yikes. Uh, for some girls, yes. That is a normal practice. <laughs> That is that is normal, and and fighting fighting at the club and uh, shootouts that is normal, and um, I I'm just encouraging people to uh, come into a new normal, and um, I understand that some people are extroverts and can't function without other human contact, uh, and quarantine is just not it for them. It's Fine. difficult. Okay, it's difficult. It is. It is. Ooh. Um, I my wedding was supposed to be last weekend. It was yes. Okay, but I but I was, was I invited? <laughs> I was being responsible, and I canceled my own fucking wedding. And so, if I can cancel my wedding, you can't cancel going to Pride. 
and hopefully not getting sick and spreading right. things to other people. Okay, so let's see, just say you don't get sick and you don't ever get sick. You just one of these people that contract it and never fully show any symptoms. That's called asymptomatic for the people that don't believe in asymptomatic. Um, but you are actively spreading it to other people. You just spread you a lot of feel, things to be asymptomatic. So you don't feel any kind of responsibility that I might be hurting and or killing other people because I want to go to the club. And I know you niggas ain't been tested. Where was that wedding at? Nine people have died. There wasn't even at a wedding. So some people got it and um, they attended this wedding and they all later was found out to be asymptomatic. But then nine people, they went back to work at nursing homes and in the jail and all this other stuff. And they were asymptomatic at the time and were passing it on to people in the nursing home. So it's like, you got to be careful because you're a healthcare worker. You can't know it's a whole bunch of CNAs in Atlanta. Going around to a, a wedding where not wearing a mask and then going to a nursing home and then you passing the you p- giving it to people in the jail, they they literally cannot go anywhere. It's just kind of like sort of due to the law and things like that. So they are, they have to be wherever you are. And so because you are covering other people, cover yourself. Socially distance. Wear your mask. <laughs> I love saying that like Andrew Caldwell. Wear your mask. <laughs> you see how close y'all your dialect is? We sisters. Yeah, it was very good. well. You got relationship in the in the in the Kojic Church as well, so I believe that. So mm-hmm. yes, definitely. Um, so I saw the tweet. I just scrolled past it. Um, I I, I don't I know who to. that person is. I don't have any opinion about that person, but that opinion that that person had at that time, because Twitter is your fleeting thoughts. I mean, so it's what you're thinking at the moment, and you thought that okay. So there are some things you shouldn't tweet. And I was going to um, get into the Twitter comments, but I was like, mm, I'm grown and old now. I don't do the Twitter back and forth anymore. <laughs> I really don't. I have a podcast. I can come and air my grievances on my podcast, and I don't have to go back and forth with you because I know you ain't got nothing to say back to me. What you got I don't to say, say back to me? What you got to say back to me? <laughs> you ain't got nothing to say back to me. If you had... Uh, constructive criticism or you were like able to educate me on facts of what's going on because you knew all the girls that was at uh, compound you took all their names you got all the coronavirus test results and you could like argue back with me about that then yes I would be very willing to go back and forth with you but I know you don't have no goddamn information so you can't go back and forth with me and I have information and I don't want to go back and forth with you so I'm not. I'm just gonna say my piece here, and you probably listening because that's some things that, that some of the things that you were saying in the comments alluded to some of the things that I previously said. So you probably listening. Hey, girl. Hey. It has come time for our last call. Our last call is where we take a shot. Um, if you are in listening range and not at work currently, um, yeah, well, or if, if you, you got something in your titty, working at home, a piece of your titty, you can. I know here for a podcast coming out today, so I keep a little something in my titty so I can participate. Yeah, pour yourself <laughs> a shot and have a shot with us. It is our last call. A toast. My last call goes out to all the gay flight attendants that have been laid off recently. Um, I've been seeing the um, oh, child, the ghetto, United Airlines and the American Airlines. What American laid off? Mm-hmm. And the um Delta Airlines people. Delta Airlines says um uh, forty thousand flight attendants are on leave. And 1,900 pilots are still up to be furloughed. American Airlines plan to furlough overall 19,000 employees, with 8,100 of them being flight attendants. <sighs> so for all the free upgrades, all the free liquor, all the discounts, 
all the buddy passes and all the hookups that I don't even know. I miss buddy passes. (laughs) And all the hookups people don't even know about. Flight attendants, we love you. And we hope that the world, W-E-R-L-D, can get back to where it was because there are 40,000 flight attendants are um, furloughed and leave of absences and all this other bull crap. That's like 40,000 plus 8,100. That's 50,000 employees just between two companies. I know three of them that are now real estate agents. It was like, damn, that was... And people, well, you know, people are buying oh, homes in the pandemic because they want to move outside of the big cities. They want to move somewhere where they can have a yard. You know, Same so me, I don't care, <laughs> don't care, sure do. Got one. Away from you, niggas. Yep. Oops. And I'm still here in D.C. in the in the middle, in the middle right now, in the middle. Oh, um. So again, shout out to all the flight attendants because they will listen to our show while they were on flights, and shout out to all the people who took plane rides and caught up on here for a pod. They'd be like, "Girl, I'm on my catching up on this flight. I'm on my third episode." Yeah. So you know, like the the airline industry is important. It brings us listeners. It brings us buddy passes. <laughs> You don't bring me nobody passes no more. And now this, that I won't right saying. now either though. That's what I'm saying. Flight attendants. I, I low key do want to go to Puerto Rico. I keep hearing that uh you have to get you have to get a COVID test where you land. Well, forty five wouldn't get rid of that, but they I don't think you had to get a test. I think you had to get the temperature check because the test results ain't immediate. Yeah. I so. think you gotta get the temperature check. But we'll, well, I don't well, know. If you're asymptomatic, we'll does your temperature really matter? Hmm. So. Well, my last call. Uh, <laughs> segue. This girl. <laughs> my last call is to um, Miss Major Griffin Gracie. Miss um, Gracie is a pioneering black transgender elder and activist. Um, she was involved in the original Stonewall riots. Uh, she is 79 years young and her and her partner are expecting their first baby. What a blessing. God is so busy. Um, what is her partner's name? They are in Little Rock, Arkansas now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so God bless them on that. Um, I don't think the the article says what her partner's name is, but anyway, um, she shout also shout out to them. Yeah, she also has a trans partner, so they're both trans um, activists, and uh, they've been trying uh, to have a baby for a while, and they are finally pregnant. So that is my last call because. Even in the middle of all of the darkness and craziness going on this year, miracles can still happen. Uh, Miss Major uh, is cherished in the LGBT community for um, all of her work since 1969. Uh, She's been an activist. She's been on the front lines of trans issues and trans advocacy. Uh, she's been a trailblazer and she deserves this if this is what she wants. She wants a baby and she should get it, even at 79 years old. So I'm absolutely here for it. Uh, she's my last call. Um, I think oftentimes we kind of shun and ignore um, the elder LGBT generation and community uh, as, ooh. Them the old girls, so mm-mm. Um, but there is not that many Stonewall activists participants left, mm-hmm. and so we should definitely celebrate the ones that we do have and any accomplishments or life goals that they achieve because they deserve, uh, especially having gone through so many times um, and so many decades without the rights and the privileges that we have uh, in 2020. Uh, If you think that, you know, us getting marriage equality finally 
um, uh, us finally being able to work places and not getting fired for appearing a little gay. If you think that those are important rights, then you have to honor the people that came before us that helped us get to the point to have those rights. And um, Ms. Major is one of them. I'm absolutely here for it. Here for it, yes. And not to change the subject, but I'm still thinking about, I'm so, uh, all I really want to be is an icon or a statement. No, it's legendary. Ow. I'm ready for season two. Come on, y'all. Legendary season two. If you got a house now, come on. Yeah. Um, it's, it's worth rewatching, especially because we already know the ending. And then you're like, oh, okay, I see where this is going. Mm, great. They can be cute this week, but I know well, how they it's can premiere end. Drag Race Holland. I'm like, they they got Drag Race everywhere at this point. We can get a second season of Legendary and deal. Now so. they did have some cute outfits on Drag Race Holland from the the trailer that I saw, um, but I was just like, I I don't, I'm not interested. I'm not either. But I got Wild Presents Plus for a couple more weeks because I bought it to watch um, Canada's Drag Race, which was really good. Shout out to the winner. I don't know if y'all are all watching. In America's Drag Race, it's um, up to the... They aired two weeks behind or something like that, so they haven't announced the winner here in the U.S. yet, but shout out to the winner. Oh, did that already happen this past Friday? Um, It happened two Fridays ago. Um, oh, well, that's not a spoiler. Then. You can say it. But on they're showing it. They're behind a couple of weeks on US TV, so oh, okay. I don't want to spoil it. If people are still watching when it comes on US TV. Oh, it has not come on. The winter yeah. has come on on US. TV. Yes. So, um, shout out to um, Canada's Drag Race. It was a great season, and I keep hearing that um, Drag Race Thailand is the best version of Drag Race franchise. But subtitles, and then I'm American, and then my privilege, and then I'm lazy. I've watched some of the runways and some of the runway concepts do be like more sickening, but I just can't understand the judge's critique. And so I'm like, I want to understand the wit and the shade, but I can't comprehend the language that they're talking. So uh, kind of. Mm. Well, Thailand is sickening. Uh, Thailand was one of my trips that I had planned this year. They got canceled. Um, oh, uh, sorry so. for bringing up bad memories. Mm. Shout out to the flight attendants that be taking those long flights. Cause if it's a 23 hour flight for me, sweetie, I can't imagine what you've been through. <laughs> Just uh, it ain't no different than your regular life. Get drunk and go to sleep, bitch. Ooh. You are where you know how to do that. Um, but that is this week's episode of Here for a Podcast. Make sure you guys are following the show at Here for a Pod on the internet, Here for a Pod dot com, Here for a Shop dot com, Here for it Hive dot com. If you want to um give some donations and support, and Here for it Live dot com is is a website, but <laughs> um. My name is Ronald Matters. Make sure you are following me on the internet at Ronald Matters. And of course, RonaldMatters.com. And I am the Superman, T-H-E-E-S-U-P-A-M-A-N, uh, a.k.a. Terms and Conditions. Because nobody reads me. I want you Twitter girls to know that when you try. I see everything and you can't read me. You can try. But you can't. And that is this week's episode of Here for a Podcast. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I'm like, I just wanted to make sure I said that because a revolution will be televised because you thought of or your prep or your discussion. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. Okay. The right. revolution the revolution will be televised. Uh take all your medications that you are prescribed. Bye. <laughs>